What is up everybody and welcome to part 5 of the Google Cloud APIs and such tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is the translation API which will translate some text to a target text. What's interesting about this one is it, the some text um, does not need any sort of indication of what that language is. It will just detect the language and figure it out. The target of course you need to supply that. So that's actually pretty interesting uh, translation API. So to do this, same thing as everything we've covered up to this point, first we need to enable it. So translation API, I think we're already on that page. Um, I've got it enabled already, but if you don't, go ahead and hit enable. Once you've done that, you're ready to rumble. So let's go ahead and make a new directory. So see out, make dir translate example, cd translate example, and then nano translate example.py. This one's going to look very similar to the last one. Hopefully by now, if you've been following through all these Google Cloud API examples, uh, you're starting to see a trend here. <laughs> and hopefully building your own API will be super simple um, or building your own projects and stuff off their APIs will be super simple. Um, so now let's go from google.cloud. We're going to import translate. Then we're going to define translate text. It's going to take a parameter of text and then it's going to take a target. I'm going to go ahead and auto specify the target as EN, which is for English. Target has to be ISO 639-1 language code. If you need that, uh, you can go to the docs and look at languages. I think it might even have them in the documentation possibly. So I'll click documentation. I want somewhere here to probably say the language code. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, well, yeah, we can click this. It'll take us to the Wikipedia page uh, where it has all the codes listed. So 639-1 right here. So all of these should in theory be supported, I think, by um, Google Cloud. Basically, you can use any of these as your target tra uh, translation. But here I'm going to translate um, unknown text to English. So <clears throat> coming over here, let's continue. I wonder how many people are mad that I'm coding Python in Nano. <laughs> translate client equals, ooh, that's a typo. Translate client equals translate dot client, similar to all the other ones. Then we're gonna say result equals translate client dot translate. It's gonna take two parameters, the text that we wanna translate and the target language. And that's just gonna be equal to whatever the target parameter was that we're, we're passing there. And then this one's really basic. So you can, for example, um, is that five? One, two, three, four, no, okay. <laughs> we can print, um, we can say the text passed and then comma uh, result. And then this will take, uh, it's just basically your dictionary. So in input, um, actually I think the result will be, a, I'm not positive, is JSON or a dictionary? I think it'll be dictionary since we're dealing in, this is actual Python API. Anyway, uh, so that's the text. Then we're going to say uh, the translation. And that will be the result. Translated text in nice non pep8 form. Print um, detected source lang. And then again, here we can say comma result detected. We're going to need quotes here. Detected source language. And then now let's do some example text. So in here, you can pass whatever you want. I'm going to copy and paste a uh, one of the comments that was made on one of my tutorials uh, that is not in English. If I remember to, I'll put a link in the description. If I forget, someone can remind me, but also just find some text that's not in your language and feel free to translate it to whatever you want. One thing I will say is try to not use translate.google.com to create some non your language text because translate.google.com is not perfect. So, but it will probably translate back and forth perfectly. So you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to use some real, another language. So anyways, paste that in there. 
Oops, going the wrong way here. Um, and then finally, I can do translate text. The text that I want to pass is example text. Um, and this is probably not going to work. Um, but this will be a common error that I think people will deal with in their world of Python. So let's go ahead and deal with it anyway. So boom. Okay, so we've got this non-ASCII character, blah, 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 blah. So there's a few reasons you're going to see this one. It's always because of non-ASCII characters, but it can be for a variety of reasons. In our case, we need to use PEP8, or I mean, not PEP8, UTF8. So let's nano back into here. And at the top of here, we need to specify our coding. So we're going to say uh, dash star dash coding colon UTF dash eight, not 78. And then the whole dash star dash. And then um, what we want to do is, I'm pretty sure this still won't work or shouldn't work. Let's make, let me make sure before I get it wrong. Oh, no, it got it. Okay, fine. Tra I typo translation though, so I'm not going here. Uh, translation. Translation. One more time. Oops, not Nano. Oh dear. There we go. Okay. So we get the text that was passed. Translation. Hello, greetings from Colombia. Excellent tutorials. I wish I could at least have Spanish subtitles. E N E. I'm not sure what that should be. Let's see if we can. Let's see. Uh, no, like the word is literally E N. Oh, okay. So it's asking for Spanish, probably. I think this was meant to say Espanol. I don't think the E in Espanol, right? There should never be an E after that. I think that's a, that's a typo, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a typo. Uh, but yeah, this is converted to UTF-8, of course, because if you looked at the actual text, it has like the fancy letters. So if we look down here, hola, saludos, here we go, excelente, saludos, nothing new there. But then, yeah, you get the, I forget what you call that, the little tilde over the end, though. Um, right, that's not... It's not proper character. So anyways, that's why it gets converted when we print out here. That's that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's the translation API. Again, I feel like I, I ran through it so fast that maybe it's it's like almost like not even cool or impressive. <laughs> but it's actually really impressive, right? That's not a perfect translation. But it's pretty close. And I, I'm pretty sure there's a typo in there. And that's, that's the problem. Um, anyway... Um, I also think it's pretty cool that it, you don't need to know the, the input language. It just, it does that all in the background. It detects what the input language is, no problem. And even we can, it will tell us what the input language was or what it thinks it was um, and all that. I, I think that's really, really impressive. Um, so anyways, this is going to conclude uh, at least my first batch of Google Cloud's um, API stuff. Even with just this, like you can do a lot of really cool things. Like for example, you can make a pretty pretty nice travel app or something like this, right? You could take pictures of signs you don't understand or don't know what they mean. Uh, that could get, you could detect the text, translate the text, uh, put it in your language. Uh, uh, like, it's just like, there's so many things that you can do and it's fast and it's pretty darn accurate. So uh, anyway, um, I'm super impressed with this. I mean, the amount, even if I'm not really positive, like some of, like at least the natural language API, I think is a little overpriced. The translation API makes sense on a per character basis. I think that's pretty fair pricing. Uh, but then, uh, and the vision API is definitely fair pricing. Like that's a steal for doing the image processing tasks like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So I think especially if like you're just trying to come up with ideas or make apps or just kind of prototype things, this is a no brainer. Like Google Cloud APIs are just, that's the way to go. I don't like being dependent on people's APIs, though, but all this stuff is stuff that you could build on your own, for sure. Like, doing natural language processing, doing sentiment analysis, doing image analysis, all these things you could build on your own, but it would it will take a while. So, like, if just to do, like, quick prototyping of ideas and stuff, this is really cool. Anyway... Um, that's it for now. I might cover some of some of the other APIs. I'd like to do the speech at some point. Um, not positive when I'll do that one, but I think that one's pretty cool, especially because there's a lot of really neat things that you can do with it. But for some reason, their documentation contains like no Python. They have some Python examples, but I need the documentation. That's what I, I really need. So <laughs> anyway, um, or not, I guess not documentation, but code, oops, not Python, uh, code examples basically. So if you go to Google Cloud Speech, uh, and then you go to their documentation. 
like for the other APIs, <clears throat> they have like, let's do how to guides. I'm trying to find it where they've got like all the different languages that they have like examples for. I'm just trying to show like a really quick example here. Yeah, libraries maybe. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, Python there, there it's there. But no, uh, let's do the rest reference. Let's do speech maybe. Overview. I'm just trying to show you that in the, I'm, I'm just not getting to it. But anyway, in the documentation, a lot of times they'll have like examples for various languages, but for some reason they don't have Python in there. They've got like uh, JavaScript and C or something like that, but they don't have Python. So anyway, that's kind of frustrating. So you kind of have to like hobble your way through it as far as I've been finding. Because speech is a little different because you have to record it, encode it, send it over, or even what's neat is they also have like the streaming API uh, where you can literally like as you're speaking, it's trying to figure out and then it gains confidence. Kind of like when you speak into your phone or you do a Google search with the microphone, how like as you're speaking, it's printing out the text, but then a lot of times it changes the text as, as you continue to speak and it like realizes, oh, he meant this or she meant that. So um, that's really cool. <laughs> and I really want to be able to do that because they've got the synchronous and asynchronous speech recognition and stuff. Uh, but for, so, like I said, right now, it doesn't really seem to be the best documented, probably because it's also in beta, the speech API uh, is beta. So I don't know, hopefully soon I can cover that one too. I'd really like to, I've kind of poked into it and I just couldn't, couldn't figure out like <laughs> how to do it easily. There are some like Python modules. If you want to do speech recognition, there is like Python speech recognition that uses, I don't think from Google cloud speech, it's like a di it's like an older version. Um, so you could look into that if you wanted, like if you're really wanting to get into Google speech, uh, right now or speech recognition right now, you can look into those cause there are some stuff there. And then also the other thing is like Google cloud, um, has competitors, Azure and IBM has, have, both of them have pretty similar things that you can do. And I mean, I'm trying to think of who else, I don't know if AWS has anything like these, like these little APIs, but anyway, that's it for now. Questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, requests, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you all in another tutorial.